Welcome in the name of Je Jesus. I'm Mark Schuler from St. Paul, uh, sort of filling in during this interim period as we seek a new pastor here. We are approaching quickly the end of Lent. Uh, this is our last gathering for midweek to consider the cross, especially as the cross is portrayed in various uh, artistic forms. This one will be a little tough because it's modern art. Oh boy, yes, yes, we're going to look at Picasso and Dali and a couple of those. But nonetheless, um, being challenged is part of how God helps us grow. And we have been looking at images of the cross throughout history to help us get a full sense of what the cross means, both a ransom for our sin, but also a sign of victory over sin and death. Um, so we'll consider continue some of that tonight. Uh, as you are able, I invite you to stand for opening hymn. This one might be a bit new for you, so you may wish to use the hymnal to help you along. It's number 432. <laughs> of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us take a moment now to go to our Lord in silence, bringing those sins we know and don't know before God 
our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the versicles. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. first reading for tonight is taken from Isaiah 53, starting at the 11th verse. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall come the righteous one, my servant. Make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading for tonight is from 1 Corinthians 2, starting at the first verse. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing.
in the name of Jesus. During the midweek services, we consider the cross, using art from across the Christian centuries to ponder anew the mystery of Christ's sacrifice. Our conversations together have illuminated the theology of sacrifice that was shown in particular in medieval and Reformation art with the portrayals of a dying Jesus on the cross. But we have also seen portrayals of the risen Jesus, victorious over sin and death. Those attending the cross have pointed to its theological implications, behold the Lamb of God, and have provided a range of perspectives on the crucifixion. The images this week are works of modern art produced primarily in the 20th century. Modern art is usually, usually associated with art in which the traditions of the past, the way things have done before, are completely cast aside. Abstraction, rather than a narrative story, is characteristic of much modern art, from Cubism to Dadaism, Surrealism, Minimalism, and postmodern examples. So in modern art, the crucifixion becomes a vehicle for artists, whether they are Christian or not, to show the crucifixion for what it was, a repulsive act and a raw human image. In 1930, Picasso painted the crucifixion. He explores his life in death paradox. Now for Picasso, there's no particular religious significance here, but his portrayal of pain and suffering is intense, intense, and it captures in a way, as a forerunner, what will be his greatest work of art from 1937, Guernica and its comment on war. The nature of agony, the distorted reality that expresses it, is part of Picasso's work. Let us take a few moments in silence to ponder this image of the cross and meditate on the concept of life in death. Not what Picasso thought, but what we know because we believe in a Jesus who rose from the dead. I now ask you, perhaps with a bit of trepidation, <laughs> for a word uh, that you would use to describe this image or your reaction to it. Confusion. Confusion. Chaotic. Chaotic. But was not the cross, the crucifixion, a very chaotic, frightening, and confusing moment? ugly, and it was, was it not? Disjointed. Complex. World. Complex. Childlike. Childlike. That's interesting. Again, Picasso has this idea of life in death. 
But we have a different nuance on that, that life comes from death, the death of Jesus. We take a moment to thank our God in silent prayer for the life that God made, made this possible because of the chaos and confusion and horror of the death of Jesus. Mark Chagall is a Jewish artist. He frequently depicts Old Testament scenes in his work. But here, he likens the persecution of Jews in Europe in the 1930s to the persecution of a Jew in the 30s of A.D. The Christ here has not a crown of thorns, but a head cloth. And instead of a loincloth, he wears a prayer shawl. Chagall's white crucifixion emphasizes Jesus' Jewishness and uses that event to interpret and identify what Jews in the 20th century experienced, especially in Europe from the Nazis. To a degree, this crucifixion carries a political message. Let us take a few moments to ponder this image of the cross and meditate on the Jewishness of Jesus. What word might you use to describe this image or your reaction to it? Horrific. Horrific. Interesting. Interesting. Fulfillment. Fulfillment in the sense that Jesus fulfills the expectations of the Jewish scriptures. Historic. Historic. Incomplete. Incomplete. I might push you a bit to expand with another word on that. They stop at his Jewishness. Yes, they do. And yet, I would gently point out, look at what is behind his head. There is a nimbus there, a Christian symbol for the holiness of Christ. I've never understood why Chagall put that there, but he did. Nonetheless, Jesus was a Jew. And what was done to the Jewish people in the middle of the 20th century is an example of why Jesus needed to go to the cross because of the horrible things that we do as human beings to each other. So, in a word of prayer, let us thank God that his son came among us 
in God's chosen people, as God promised, and has redeemed all through his Son. Marcus Reichert's 1948 crucifixion paintings have been described by Richard Harries, the Bishop of Oxford, as being among the most disturbing images of the crucifixion painted in the 20th century. They confront us with the terribilita, the terribleness of it all. Reichert commands the viewer's attention with this description of Christ's agony. Let us take a few moments in silence to ponder this image of the cross and the agony that Christ endured for us. A word of description or reaction? Lonely. Lonely. Horror. Horror. The use of unusual proportions, the enlarged eyes and the enlarged mouth. You could almost hear him crying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, why have you forsaken me? Darkness and light. Darkness and light. At Gethsemane, Jesus, anticipating what was to come, prayed, Father, if it be possible, remove this cup from me. Not my will, though, but yours be done. Let us, in prayer, thank God that Jesus was willing to endure even this for us. In his 1954 crucifixion, Salvador Dali used his theory of nuclear mysticism, as he called it, a fusion of 
Catholicism, mathematics, and science to create this surrealistic portrayal of Christ's crucifixion. Levitating before a hypercube, which is a geometrical form, Christ's body is healthy, athletic, bears no signs of torture. The crown of thorns and nails are missing. The artist's wife, Gala, poses as a devotional figure. Witnessing Christ's triumph over that harm which was brought upon his body. Let us take a few moments to ponder the cross and Christ's triumph, his victory over those forces arrayed against him. I invite a word of reaction and or description for this crucifixion. Transcendent. Transcendent. Surreal. Modern art it supposedly casts aside the things of the past, but what have you noticed about the last two pieces? The one, the cost of our ransom, suffering, and this one, the victory over death. Those same two ideas we have seen before are in these two pieces. Let us give thanks to God that his son did overcome death and the grave for us and for the world. This crucifixion might be as disconcerting as Picasso's. Fernando Botero, an artist from Colombia, approaches Golgotha with a bit of dry humor. Instead of depicting Christ in any kind of beautiful way, this Colombian puts an unflattering eye on the crucifixion, this particular one from 2011. Botero's Christ is portly and undignified. Golgotha is located in Central Park, not with Jerusalem in the background, but Manhattan. The painting 
is a part of a series of works done by Botero protesting the violence in his country caused by American interference in their political affairs. Christ's body is ironically the green of the Statue of Liberty. It is a protest piece. And again, a reminder, as the crucifixion of Jesus is, not only of what God has done for us in Jesus, but what horrible things we human beings do to each other. Let's take a moment in silence to recall the victims of human behavior across time and all of our contributions to that. This work is a bit hard to describe or to react to, and yet I wonder if I could challenge you to try a word for it. Green. Green. That's a word. Distorted. Distorted. Selfish. Blame. I didn't catch that. Blame. Blame. Missional. Oh, missional. In that Jesus died for all people, whether it's in Manhattan or mm -hmm. wherever. Yeah. So we need to be going to cities in the name. If you look closely in the background at the little characters, that's people going around their normal lives as if nothing is happening. Which is how we can sometimes be about how humans treat others. Let us give thanks that God has a remedy for our great sinfulness in his son Jesus who went to the cross. Our final work, titled Station 12, from the Stations of the Cross, is by Jen Norton, a Christian artist who created this work in 2019. In discussing this work, she quotes Psalm 31, verse 6. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, Lord, God of truth. Norton continues, when the world gives you one story about who you are and what you should be, but you find that God's plan intersects and is dramatically opposed to what your ego has built, you have the cross. To do God's will, begins with dying first to who you thought you were. Only then can you become that grain of wheat that must fall to the ground and die before it can bear fruit, John 12, 24. 
That's what we have in Jesus' death. In the moment of his earthly death, life is flipped, and we are given a chance to participate in the life of Christ. Let us take a moment to ponder this image and consider how the cross and the death of Jesus opens up us to a new life. A word of description or reflection? Surrender. Surrender. Humility. Humility. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Finish. Finish. the same time. in Jesus on the cross. Depictions of modern art are often unsettling, even confusing. But the cross of Christ pushes us to consider how we humans have disrupted this world that God has made and have mistreated those made in God's image. Into this confusion, came Jesus, dying for us, dying for us all, that we might rise with him. Easter is coming. And as we enter Holy Week, let us remember that at the cross, God does God's best work. We stand before the cross with reverence and with awe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, so that we might speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed, that faith which we share with Christians around the world. I believe.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this congregation, as it seeks a new pastor, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and drive from them all the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing be on us always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. We together sing.